Hi, uh, it's James Wigglesworth. I'm here with Hangington Dynamics. Um, I'm here to show you something cool we made during the quarantine times. Um, so what you see here is an automated laser cutter. Um, so we have our Dexter robot actually taking parts out of the laser cutter and automating the process. Um, as you can see here, it presses the print button on the printer. Um, it's gonna go ahead and laser cut the, the face shield. Um, robot's gonna come down, pick the face shield up, put it in a box with the rest of uh, the other face shields. Um, a roll is going to turn, pr pulling in a new sheet of plastic. The robot's going to press the key on the keyboard, and it will just repeat the process with no humans involved. With just a Dexter robotic arm, you can interact with external machines like 3D printers and laser cutters the same way a human would. No API is needed, and you can turn your garage into your own personal factory. Now we're going to go through and show you the details of how it works. This setup is basically, we're trying to automate laser cutting of face shields um, for the coronavirus relief. So there's a whole bunch of components in this, a whole bunch of like moving parts. So I'll go through all of them. Uh, first thing here is Dexter, of course. Um, so on this Dexter is a passive suction cup gripper. Um, so this particular gripper uh, will create, it's like a normal suction cup when you uh, press things to it, but it will release the air and drop whatever is holding um, when this little latch turns. Um, and so it's totally makeshift. Everything in this is 100% makeshift. We have no production value during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so there's a rubber band there, some hot glue to add extra padding, you know. But the thing has been reliable. It, it hasn't broken yet. So that's that. Um, so Dexter is being controlled by DDE, which is running on the computer. Um, and so in this DDE program, it's looking at a few different things um, and basically coordinating all the timing and mo motion of the robot um, along with the roll. Um, so I guess I can come back to this once I explain all little components. So DDE is uh, looking at a live webcam, webcam feed. So I can show you that's live. Um, and you can see down here, it's actually looking at what's in that, that square. Um, and so when I turn my hand over, it's actually displaying like the color of my hand, uh, both in the numbers, it's actually showing a sample of what the color it sees. Um, so what we're looking for is when this button lights up, the robot has to go down and hit it. Um, and so we're just going off of brightness. So when all of these are above, I think I said uh, 240, then it will trigger and, uh, and start the job. And so the first thing the robot does is it goes down and presses the button. Um, uh, yep, and then so to get that button going, we have to go into, this is uh, the Glowforge uh, GUI. And so the, the laser cutter that we're using is a Glowforge laser cutter. Um, and in this GUI, there's a whole bunch of settings to uh, tweak your design, but the main thing that we're going for is that print button. Um, originally, we tried just positioning the mouse over the print button and having Dexter hit the, the mouse click button. Um, this worked the first time, however, it would never work again, and it turns out you need to slightly move the mouse to actually click the print and have it register. So um, that didn't work. What we did instead is we actually go up here, and then we do Shift-Tab, uh, I think three times. And then now if I hit enter, it will start the print. Um, and then so Dexter is now gonna hit the enter key on this keyboard um, between cycles to start the next laser cutting cycle. Um, something interesting to point out here is that the, the design that we have is slightly tilted. So um, those lines are not horizontal. We rotated it slightly so that uh, the edge doesn't catch back here. Um, and so when you do a cut, it leaves this like nice flat edge and if it's like perfectly parallel to this, um, it will catch and jam. And so originally we were just poking it down by hand, um, and we're trying to get Dexter to poke it down and pull it through, uh, but that was tricky. And so instead we just put it at a very slight angle, and as long as like the first edge goes down, the rest just follows, no problem. Um, something else I want to show you is there's a frame we put together. Um, and so these are just carbon fiber strikes uh, held together by these uh, 3D printed parts. It's hard to show you, and maybe I can show you the 3D printed file of it because everything's kind of uh, glued together. Um, but these have little teeth, uh, little spikes, and they like hook into this uh, honeycomb grid here. Um, so they 
keep uh, the sheet pressed down, and so there's no air gaps. There's uh, no, no, none of the sheet is lifting up, um, and that's really important because if the if the laser uh, hits the sheet and when it's uh, raised up, it will be out of focus and it won't cut through. Um, and so this keeps it nice and taut and uh, super flat. Um, and then over here, so this is like the main roll. It's like uh, all of our material goes here. Um, and it's loose right now. <laughs> it's totally jerry-rigged. We have it uh, clamped down to some uh, camera stands, but it got the job done. Um, so, yeah. Um, and we'll get these professionally cut. We actually just cut it with scissors. We drew a yellow line and, um, yeah, there was actually a lot of manual labor involved in this, even though we're automating and everything. But now that we have the proof of concept, we can start, uh, you know, paying for rolls that are cut to size and that sort of thing. So this roll gets fed through underneath our frame, held down tight, all cut out. Um, and then it goes back here onto this spool. And this is this spool is actually um, the one driving any motion of the plastic. Um, and so you can see over here, so we have another fairly jerry-rigged part. This is um, scraps from our old version of Dexter, our Dexter HD line. Um, and so you can see here there's a motor inside here um, hooked up to a gearbox. And so that gives us a nice like high gear ratio um, that makes it really strong. Um, and then we're using a belt that's plugged into this pulley and this pulley is attached to the tube. And so the tube is wrapping up all the uh, the laser cutter laser cut material. Um, yep. So go back to DDE. So I guess uh, the order the order that everything happens is the first thing uh, Dexter does is it goes. Let's see show you the code um, okay so here's like the main code um, so we have an idea of like a home position so the position the position the robots in right now is home um, this is kind of like a nice midway point between all the positions it also allows us to like open and close the, the lid of the laser cutter it's kind of out of the way um, so Dexter's gonna go home. It's gonna push the button. Oh, and I should mention this is all oh 250. Okay, so th th this is all only gonna happen um, when it sees the color of this button lit up, meaning the laser cutter is ready to print. Um, otherwise, it's just gonna loop through and do nothing. Um, so yep, yeah, the first thing we do, we go home, um, and then we're gonna go and push the button, which is done with these commands. Um, we're going to go back home and then we're going to sleep while cutting. So right now this is just done by sleeping for, I guess, 45 seconds. Um, in the future we plan to just use the, uh, the color again to, to trigger this because the, the, the button, uh, unlights up. It, it dims down when you, when the print is complete. So, yep. Uh, so after the, uh, the print is done, we're going to go down and grab the sheet. So we're going to go down and suction cup the sheet out of the printer. Um, and then, oh, originally we had, we had it speaking to a human, giving the human instructions. Um, so <laughs> when it was ready for the, the roll to be moved, the human would uh, be told the command, pull the roll, please, um, and physically move the roll. So right now we, we have that automated, so this actually doesn't even need to be there. Um, there we go. Uh, and then we're going to go back home. Um... Uh, I should also mention grab sheet does a few things. So it goes down and picks it up, and then it also like rotates it over and drops it into this bin. Um, and so all these things are kind of within Dexter's reach. Um, it could reach the button, the laser cut part, the keyboard on the pr on the computer, and also the bin for all the final parts. Um, so far, we've done about like 30 of these, um, and those are all basically failures in our um, <laughs> our prototypes. But failures produce usable face shield, so no failures here. Um, so after it grabs the sheet, it's going to go back home. 
it's going to issue the, this is the uh, the roller command so this is actually turning on that motor these um the this robot is uh, hooked up to that motor it looks like a six axis on Dexter um, the six axis is different from the rest because it looks like an extruder and it will basically rotate uh, continuously and with no limits um, you just have to time it and uh, you know, tell it how long to, to slide for. Um, and so for us, we're sliding for 13.5 uh, seconds. Um, and then we're gonna sleep for another 20. So now now it's like, there's new material in there, um, everything's reset, and we're actually waiting for the laser to cool down. Um, and so we're, we're waiting for this button, this print button to become ungrayed out um, and clickable. So, yep. And then, when that happens, we call this command, which is hit enter, um, and this moves the robot down to uh, hitting the enter key on the keyboard. Um, and then when that's all done, we're going back home. Um, and then it loops through and just automates the process. Um, and that's all you need to do. So so to, uh, to start this, I'm going to go ahead and have this running. So right now, it's, still, it's, it's running right now. It's um, waiting for the, the light to turn on. Um, and so what I do is I come here go up to this just because we know where it is and hit tab twice and hit enter um, and so notice that the the print button has been hit I'm gonna move out of the way um, and wait for it to go uh, you can notice that the, the printer does take a lot of time so even after hitting print it takes like 30 seconds for it to actually start printing um, and that's kind of an issue we uh, would love if Glowforge could make this process a little bit faster, but this is still better than doing a lot of other processes like cutting by hand. So there's the button, button's glowing, or what hits the button, laser cutter is going to heat up, and now it's going. So another thing to notice, the laser is actually cutting uh, the small pieces first, and then it cuts the outline after. This is so that it doesn't uh, peel up when it tries to do final cuts. Um, yep. There it goes. So the, cut, the sheet is fully cut. The printer is going to shut down. Okay, we're gonna shut down, see the, the light actually turned off on the button. Robot's gonna go over, pick the sheet up. All right, move it over to the bin. Drop it in the bin. Yep, it's telling the human to pull the roll, but the robot will actually pull the roll over here. And there we go, so. The roll is getting pulled. The first, this is the first time I'm running it today, so it's a little, little slack in the system. But so now we have a nice clean sheet. Um, the robot is now waiting for the printer to cool down and the print button to come back. Enter button has been hit, and uh, it's printing the next one. So there we go. Yep. And so this makes uh, mass producing with the laser cut parts possible, at least on our, our, our scale. Oh, um, I also wanted to point out that the laser is not supposed to be run with the lid open. Um, and so this is to keep all the toxic fumes in. Um, and what we do is we just have our garage door opened. And so we're fuming out all of the fumes. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend this normally. Uh, and also the way we did that, by we actually just taped... Um, a couple of magnets by the door. There's two sensors in here, and we were able to trick them by uh, pretending the door is closed with magnets. So, don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> Go.
Yep, nice and shaky. <laughs> Good first prototype.